Welcome back to the Corporate Finance Academy. Today we are going to explain the cash conversion cycle. All right, the cash conversion cycle. We are going to go through the cash timeline and how cash flows through a business. We're going to talk about what cash conversion cycle actually is, the formula. We'll go through an example and then we'll wrap things up. So the cash timeline, and really here we're talking about businesses that sell a product. It could be a retail business, could be a manufacturing business that makes then sells a product. This is the general flow of how a business would operate. The first thing you're going to do is buy your inventory. And for, again, for a, a manufacturing business, they're going to buy raw materials and turn it into a product. But for simplicity here, we'll talk, talk about just buying inventory. But often in the business world, when you buy inventory, you don't pay for it yet. You're actually going to pay for it maybe 30 days later, 15, 45, it depends. And that is when the cash first goes out the door of the business. Then you're going to sell the product. And again, many times in the business world, you don't actually collect cash when you sell the product. You give them five days to pay or 15 or 30 or longer. Then your cash finally comes in the door. So you have these times where you're, you've got payment terms, so you don't have to pay yet. Then your product's sitting in inventory until you sell it. And then once you sell it, you're waiting to get paid. And that is how cash flows through a business. So what is the cash conversion cycle? So this is really the number of days it takes a company to convert inventory into cash. And the way it's measured is first by looking at how long it takes you to sell your inventory. And this is measured by days inventory outstanding or DIO. And you can see the formula there. It's inventory divided by COGS times the number of days. And what this tells you is the number of days it takes you to sell off your inventory. And you want this number to be as small as possible. Then you take this plus your day sales outstanding, or DSO. And what DSO is, is the number of days it takes you to collect your cash. And the formula here is your accounts receivable divided by your sales times your number of days. And similar to DIO, you want this to be as small as possible. Then you're going to subtract out your DPO, or days payable outstanding. And this is how long it takes you to pay your bills. And you can see the formula here is accounts payable divided by COGS times days. And you want this to be as big as possible. And why do you want this one to be big? Because you want it to take a long time for you to pay your suppliers. The longer you're not paying them, the longer you have the cash in your hand. So the cash conversion cycle is DIO plus DSO minus DPO, and that is the cash conversion cycle. So why is this important? So it, it's really a measurement of, are you efficient with your working capital? So the cash conversion metric is going to tell you if you're doing a good job or not. And ultimately cash is king, and if you're not efficient with working capital, you won't be solvent as a business. Now, cash conversion is also a great KPI or benchmark. You can use it to set targets. You can use it for trending to see if you're improving. You can compare different divisions internally. You can use it to benchmark across your industry. It can be a very useful tool. So cash conversion is, is a nice measurement tool to tell you how you were doing. So what are your levers? So this is very basic, but for inventory, you can hold a lower amount of inventory you can have fewer days on hand, you can lower your safety stocks, you can have lower order quantities and order more frequently, and you could also use consigned inventory where you don't actually take title or pay for that inventory. The terms don't start until you pull it, but it's actually located on site. For receivables, you can get paid up front, you can reduce your terms, you get paid in advance, and you have to chase past dues hard. Don't let, don't let customers go past due. And lastly, for payables, you can increase your terms with suppliers. Instead of paying them in 30, go for 45 or 60 days. Increase that. In an ideal world, you wouldn't pay your suppliers until you've actually converted your inventory into a sale. And that's negative cash conversion. And we'll mention that at the end. So a quick example, just so you can see how this looks. If you were to do math on all three of these, you have your day's inventory outstanding, inventory 
average inventory is 1,700. You have 14,000 of COGS, 365 days. That's a 44-day DIO. Sales, you've got a $1,500 accounts receivable balance, 22,000 of sales. 365, you got 25 days DSO. And then payables, 1,200 of payables, 12,000 of COGS, 365 days is 37. So your cash conversion cycle here is the 44 plus the 25 minus the 37. That's 33 days. So that's a wrap. So overall, this simple video, the cash conversion, the dream here is a negative cash. Even, no matter how low your positive number is, even if you're down to single digits, eight days of cash conversion, you're still using cash. But if companies like Amazon actually sometimes have negative cash conversions. So they're getting paid before they pay for the inventory. That's the dream here for cash conversion. But in the meantime, you wanna to aim to shorten that cash conversion. Um, you wanna look for longer supplier terms, short collection terms to your customers, maybe turn credit off and go cash in advance. And you wanna turn your inventory fast. You can also look at financing plays where you get cash uh, for your receivables, but these can be a little complex, but for some businesses, they do make sense. And that's all we have for today. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. Make sure you subscribe, go to our site, join our newsletter. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll be back with more videos soon.